Hello, travelers. We are going to be talking about something super important today. It's not the most exciting thing when it comes to travel, but it does make a huge difference in our trips. So I wanted to share it because I often get asked if there was one piece of advice you could give me to make our trip better, what would it be? And this is the advice. So this video is going to be talking about the all important family meeting. This is part of our pre-trip planning. Um, you can do more than one. I usually do one like a, a month out from the trip just to get excited about it and talk about it. And then we do it within the week before leaving for vacation. So the family meeting is super simple. It does not have to be anything complicated or super formal. Um, it has a couple of steps that I go through every single time. And all I recommend is that everyone gather around on the porch, in the yard, at the dinner table, without their electronics, without anything to distract them. And I recommend including everyone in the family in some way. I think this is an important part of trip planning that will continue for years. So if you can bring younger kids into it and they can sit, even if it's just for a few minutes or the first part of it and then go play, they will, they will be able to stay longer each time as they get older and be part of the trip planning. One of the things I think this does is helps other members of the family besides the main trip planner. And in this example, I'm just gonna be talking about it from the mom perspective because a lot of moms are planning the trips, booking the trips, doing all the details and the fine tuning and uh, carry that emotional labor for the family and know what everyone's going to need for the trip all the way down to packing. So this is going to be talking about it from the mom's point of view, but that's not to say it couldn't be the dad or another adult that's in charge of all of this. So I think it really helps family members aside from the main trip planner take ownership of the vacation and realize that they're part of the process and what they do, how they act, how they feel is all important during the vacation process and that their behavior and their actions have impact on other people that are vacationing. So you don't want to end up, or the, the goal is to not end up just parenting in a different location. We want everyone on the trip to enjoy the trip and have a chance to do what they want to do on their family vacation. And that's part of setting the expectations, which we'll talk about. So the first thing I do when we sit down and have a family meeting is just a review of the itinerary. We go over what the plan is. Let's say it's, let's say the plan is to go to the beach for the week. We're gonna talk about if we're flying there or driving there so the kids know what to expect as far as transportation. We're gonna talk about, are we stopping to visit grandma on the way? Are we going to be meeting another family there? Are we uh, gonna be spending all the time at the beach? Is there a planned day for a water park? Is there a planned day to go out to eat? Are we going to be doing meals at the beach house? All of those kinds of things and just sort of run through the itinerary of what each day will entail so that when those days happen, the kids aren't surprised, the, the, the husband's not surprised, it's not the first time everyone's hearing things, um, they know the plan ahead of time. Two, and this is one of the most important parts and one of the pieces that I certainly left out for a long time and that I think a lot of people don't talk about ahead of time. And, and I think this is really important when, you, when you're doing the family meeting so that everyone in the family can hear about it. And this is setting expectations for the trip. So. I'm not talking about necessarily behavior expectations or you guys better be on your best behavior. I don't want to hear fighting, blah, blah, blah. Although, you know, anything like that can be included in this part of that. I'm talking more about setting the expectations of who's doing what on vacation. So you as the mom are wanting some relaxation time or you're imagining going to the beach and in your head, having a glass of wine on the porch at sunset is your goal and and what you picture for relaxing or what it's going to take for you to feel good about this vacation afterwards i feel like you got what you wanted or it's that you want to be able to read on the beach when you wake up in the morning or you know you're expecting something to go differently than it does at home this is the time i would talk about it and depending on what it is this is something that can happen between the adult planners of the trip or with the children involved but i would say if there's any change in routine for the kids this is the time to express it. For example, if you're if you're picturing that like you're gonna do dinner and then you wanna relax and have a glass of wine out on the porch, let your husband know that you want him to be doing bedtime routine with the youngest kids. That might be something different than what happens at home, but let him know that, you know, for me to feel like I've, I've really had a great vacation, here's what I wanna do. So 
I will clean up and then you can put the kids to bed. Something like that, whatever works for your family. Uh, if you're asking your kids, what, what do they want to accomplish on vacation? What are they expecting? What are they hoping for? And one of your kids wants to go looking for shark teeth on the beach and that's what they're looking forward to most. That's what they're super excited about because they heard this beach has shark teeth. That's just something great to like tuck into the back of your head because maybe you would have ended up doing it anyway or maybe you wouldn't have made it a priority and then you have, you know, the last two days of your trip are rainy and you don't get to do it. So you can make it a priority during your trip or you can say, hey, I know you wanted to go look for shark teeth. Let's go take a walk and do that now. And they will remember that you remembered the thing that was important to them. Even if it seems small to you, it's important to them and you remembering is going to make their day. I think it's important for, especially for kids to understand, houses to that this is a vacation for everybody in the family and everyone's going to have different things that they want or need and it's important to pay attention to what somebody asked for for their vacation so if you're asking for quiet time to read your book in the morning on the beach that means that you know kids aren't running up to you asking to go in the water you need to stop put the sunscreen on all of that stuff so if you say hey i just want a half an hour can you get the kids ready inside the house and I will be out here reading and then we can, you know, tag team going to the beach together, that kind of thing. Letting those expectations ahead of time lead to so much less frustration and disappointment when you're in the midst of the trip because even if you have to repeat yourself again, it's not the first time that your partner is hearing that you want that alone time in the morning or you want to not have to put sunscreen on the kids and they can do it. It's something that can, you know, go a long way in expressing your expectations. All right, the third thing that I think is really important, especially um, if you are traveling with kids, if you're traveling alone with kids, just if you're doing something outside your normal scope, which you're going to be because you're going somewhere different, is to talk about what to do if something goes wrong. Now, I'm not talking about like catastrophe or anything like that, but this is a great time to talk about safety with kids. What do you do if you get lost? Uh, you're gonna give them a roadmap ahead of time. What do you do if you get lost on the beach? If you, what do you do if you can't find our umbrella? Our umbrella is green and blue, so look for our umbrella. If you can't find our umbrella, you go find the lifeguard and the lifeguard will help you find us or we will find you at the lifeguard station and give them that reassurance. We often talk about what to do if you get lost in certain situations and who it is that you should look for to help. So if you're at Disney, you can go to a cast member, anybody with a little white name tag that has their, their name here, they can help you and we will find you and give that reassurance so that if the worst were to happen and someone did get lost, they remember there's there's helpers there to help them and that you will find them. Um, and that can help people stay calm during a situation like that. But other things you can talk about if something goes wrong is just, you know, if you are traveling somewhere where there is a time change and jet lag is going to be involved or bedtimes are shifting or something like that, you can talk about, you know, we might be a little tired and cranky and let's remember to just use our kind words when we're talking to each other. That's a huge one for us, especially because I am not a fun person to be around when I'm tired and jet lagged and my patience is like that. So I can say, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to snap at you. I'm tired and cranky. The plane ride made me tired. I didn't get any sleep. Let's reset. I apologize. They will understand because they heard it ahead of time that that is a possibility that's in the realm of possibility. So it's a great time to talk about safety issues, anything that you see. If you're, if you're camping for the first time, if you are, um, you know, whatever is going on, whatever your scenario is, just think it out a little bit ahead of time. Think about what could possibly go wrong. And you can mention that and it doesn't have to be all doom or gloom. It could just be like, here's some things that could happen and let's talk about what we should do in those situations. And that's one of the things that I talk about in the month ahead of time family meeting too, um, and then bring it up again the week before and see if the kids remember what we're talking about. Number four, this is a fun one for everyone, packing. I actually like packing because I feel like it's that anticipation before a trip, but it can get really tedious, especially when you have to pack for more than just yourself. So if you're packing for you or for kids, packing is one of those things that I think is a life skill. And I have, in, it's in the books that I wrote, it's in every conversation that I have about traveling with kids is teaching your kids to pack. So I don't necessarily think that it's something that you should do by yourself 100%. Now, I'm not saying that you should let a toddler help you pack all the way because that could get really messy. But 
one of the things you definitely can do is you can tell a three-year-old or a two-year-old, hey, go get me five diapers. Can you count five diapers for me? And see if they can bring you back five diapers. And that's gonna lead to, okay, when they're five years old, I need you to go get me five pairs of underwear and two sets of pajamas. And that's gonna lead to when they're a teenager, here's your list, go get, get what's on your list. That's going to evolve over time, but you can't just hand a list to a teenager or say, hey, go pack for yourself and expect them to know when they've had no practice their entire lives. So that's why I say start kids young with packing, age appropriate ways. Obviously for a three-year-old, you're gonna be packing all of their stuff for them. But if you can give them little tasks and help them feel involved, again, it's one of those things that helps people take ownership of the trip and feel more like they have responsibility for this family vacation that's happening and it just it has led to better trips for us okay number five is the adult wrap-up so this is after you've you know dismissed the kids from the conversation this is a great time to reiterate your expectations as far as what's going to change parentally because i'm a strong believer that if two parents are going on vacation two parents should be equally enjoying that vacation that doesn't mean that the mom is you know, still going to be primary caregiver 99% of the time and the dad is on vacation 99% of the time. This is something where even if you're in a household where both parents work and have different responsibilities at home, those things can, may, and should shift on vacation so that everyone is coming back from the vacation feeling like they got something out of it. It shouldn't be, again, that the mom is doing the primary parenting on vacation and the dad is feeling nice and relaxed to go back to his job afterwards. This is something where I think that the adults need to have that expectations chat and say, hey, I want you to handle you know, dinner Tuesday and Thursday. I want you to pick the restaurant we're going to go to just to take that, that mental load off of the trip planner. Unless the trip planner says, I'm gonna plan our meals for the week, um, you know, here's, here's the ingredients, you go grocery shopping for it. and you cook dinners Tuesdays and Thursdays. I mean, it can be split up a million different ways, but this is definitely a point at the pre-vacation planning stage where I think that whoever the vacation planner is needs to make their, their expectations known and, and do not feel afraid to ask for what you need and say what you expect and spend a little time and think about what do you want out of this vacation? What will make you feel the best? What will make you feel like you're coming home refreshed and relaxed. And if that means that, you know, dad takes the kids to the water park and you have a day off just to chill and decompress. If that means that you talk about your activities and you say, you know what, I think we should, we should take everything off the plate for the first day. We're not gonna know how we feel after a long day of driving. Let's just take everything off of the schedule and we'll see how we feel and just kind of wing it when we get there. Or let's plan in an indoor activity for the middle of the week in case we're all sunburnt or it's rainy or something like that. And you can have those expectations, but I think it's a great time to say, I need some alone time. I need some quiet time. I need some time to decompress so that when you say that again, like, hey, I'm gonna go read my book. Hey, I'm gonna go have my glass of wine. Keep the kids inside, please. That kind of thing. It's not the first time and you're not saying it out of aggravation because you've wanted this to be happening all week and it hasn't happened. You're saying it because you're reiterating what you've already laid down in this family meeting. So you've wanted this to be happening all week and it hasn't happened. You're saying it because you're reiterating what you've already laid down in this family meeting. So I hope those five things help. I think this is a, a very important thing that we started implementing years ago and it has truly made a difference in the types of vacations that we have. We are in the midst of getting ready to leave in two days for a trip and we are about to have our family meeting later today about all of these things. So I hope you found this video helpful. I'm curious, comment down below if you do something like this. Do you have a family meeting with your family before you go on trips or do you like it to be one big surprise? What works best for you? Let me know and be sure to like and subscribe for more content on making traveling with your kids more enjoyable for you and them. Safe travels.